Welcome to Manny's TV Talk, where we will talk about all of our favorite reality TV shows and news surrounding them. Grab a snack, a drink, and get comfortable because this starts now. Yo, what is up everybody? Time for our Bachelor in Paradise recap. It's week two. Things got very exciting this episode. So let's get started. First of all, I'm so glad that they played the intro this time. I love the little song, Almost Paradise. So the episode begins where we left off last week, which was this weird situation with Will, Olivia, and Kylie. Remember, Will had a thing with Olivia, but he left her for Kylie. But now, the man who Kylie originally wanted was Avon, and now Avon is here. So Olivia thinks Kylie was simply using Will as a placeholder. Now, he's here late, but he's not here empty-handed. He has a date card, so he walks in and greets the group. Kylie is having like an out-of-body experience. She can't believe she's in his presence. And she is precisely the first one who Avon asks to go talk with. You could tell she was living for this moment. Avon is a cool guy, so Will is freaking out. Okay, so then after chatting with Kylie, Avon asks Olivia to talk. And this is the perfect opportunity for Olivia because this would be great revenge. Kylie took her man, so now she can take Avon. And on top of that, she also thinks Avon's pretty cool. So after thinking about it, he ends up asking Kylie on the date. No hesitation, she says, hell yeah. So now, now, not only is Will upset, but so is Olivia a little bit. Kylie does take Will to go talk with him, and she says that she felt very real feelings yesterday, and going on this date doesn't mean that yesterday is just null and void. He says, to be honest, you are really the only one who I see myself connecting with. She says, well, maybe this can, you know, just be something that we overcome. Now, she is saying that, but she did not mean that at all. Avon actually interrupts their chat to go get her to get going on this date. They leave and go on a yacht. Poor Avon was struggling and fighting for his life trying to get that champagne bottle open. That was funny. The conversation, at first, it was, you could sense a little awkwardness. Not too much, but just like the type of awkwardness you have when you really like someone. She says she wanted him to be the bachelor when she was on. And she really wanted this. They're saying, you know, I'm glad you came. I'm glad you picked me. And then they get to the action. They have a makeout session. So kissing someone you like on a yacht in Mexico. What else could you ask for? But, you know, it's still time for the other couples to pair up back in the beach. So they're connecting. Brayden and Kat seem pretty solid. Blake and Jess, Sean and Rachel. Erin is trying hard to connect with Eliza, which I don't blame him because she's stunning. But Aaron, he had a thing with Mercedes the previous night. He made out with her. So for him to wake up, completely ignore Mercedes, and just go full in on Eliza is confusing Mercedes a little bit and it's upsetting her. And I'm not surprised because that he would do this. Because y'all know from charity season, I always told y'all that someone in the buttermilk ain't clean with him. So after spending some very good time with Eliza, he kind of has to tell her that he kissed Mercedes the, not the, <laughs> the night before. Eliza appreciates that he told her, but she's triggered. She wants no more triangles, squares, hexagons, none of that. And she gets very emotional, which is understandable. She cries and has to leave the scenes for a little bit, which, again, I understand, but it's been a day. I don't know if it's that serious. So the other girls have to tell Mercedes about the situation that Eliza is upset, so poor Mercedes just feels horrible. So then Eliza goes to talk to Aaron. She says she was definitely thrown on by what he said to her because she doesn't want a repeat of last year, but Eliza tells him that she really likes him. And they kind of make up after that. I don't know. I feel like Eliza's the type of girl who likes whatever guy she even slightly connects with. Some of the other people on the beach are just chilling, playing around, making out. Everyone is waiting and anticipating for another guy to come down. Someone did end up coming down, but it was Hannah Brown. 
Everyone was shocked. They're saying, oh my god, Hannah Brown, what is she doing here? They were doing a little bit too much. They were being a little too extra. They were acting like she was Oprah Winfrey, like she was a celebrity, like they were worshipping her. I was confused when I saw her at first because she was on her Instagram that she's engaged. She starts by introducing herself and then she starts to pull some guys at a time, like Blake and um, Brayden. And they're catching her up to speed. Will shares her situ his situation with her. Blake was definitely drooling over her. But the question around everyone is, is she here to date? Which, how y'all gonna worship her that much and don't even know if she has a relationship? But anyway, it was funny to have them like be suspenseful for a while. But she ends up telling them that she's already dating someone. She is here to quote-unquote help out. This was just some clickbait. So she leaves a card that she brought with her and says, I will see you guys in a little while. And the date card pretty much said that they were going to have a campfire and maybe have some questions for the people. So it's a little later that day and it's time for the campfire. In the moment that they're having it, Avon and Kylie returned. Finally, it was a little bit awkward, especially with Will, because everybody was asking them, like, what did y'all do today? But anyway, Hannah sits in the middle. It was sort of like a housewives reunion. She's asking all the fiery questions like, who would you like to go on a date with? Who would you like to kiss? But then it starts to get a little dangerous when she asks certain couples like Sean and Rachel how they're doing. But oh my God, like that's where the messy part came. Well, who, she asks Sean, who besides Rachel would you like to go out with? And instead of saying, you know, no one, I really like Rachel, he says, Jess. Now, Jess has been having a connection with Blake. So then Blake is asked if he would be open to be with other women, and he says yes. Kat and Brayden seem pretty solid, and Brayden, he was asked the exact same question, but he said, there's no one else that, you know, has my attention. It's all, I'm all in for Kat. So that's good. But Kat, on the other hand, when asked has a list of possible men who have not yet come to the beach. So that did not sit well with Brayden at all. He's starting to wonder, is she using me? Like, imagine being in that situation. Aaron says that he has eyes for only one person, and that is Eliza. So that was like a slap in the face to Mercedes, but it was like also a, let's flip the page. Then they ask Kylie who's the best kisser, and of course she picked Avon. So, Avon is questioned, and he says that the date went great, but if he had to choose someone else to have gone on the date with, he probably would have chosen Olivia. So, this Olivia-Kylie feud is back in session. Because they ask Olivia, if you had to kick someone out of this beach, who would it be? And she says, Kylie. And I mean, that was very shady, but can y'all blame her? Then the final question goes to Will, how would he like to leave this journey? And he says, engaged to someone. In that moment, I feel bad for him because he for sure is messy, but I do think he's truly in it for the right reasons and just wants to find his person. So that was that. Personally, I love this campfire. They should do this every season going forward because it's like the best way to get some drama going, some, you know, just stir the pot. So after that, some of the couples talk about what just went down. Rachel and Sean actually seem to be doing pretty good, but they mentioned that they're a little bit worried about Kat because of all those men that she listed earlier. So what if they end up coming down? And then once again, Will and Kylie talk. Ideally, Will wants to hear, it's you, the one that I want. But unfortunately, that's not what she says. She says that she really likes him. They had a great connection the night before. But today she felt a spark that was undeniable with the other guy and says, I'm sorry, but I'm thankful for our time. So pretty much, you know, shopping it with the axe right there. Poor Will. I think the problem is that he gave himself all in way too quickly. Kylie then goes to tell Avon that she already ended everything with Will. So at this point, Olivia is definitely vindicated, but I feel like there's going to be more to this Kylie story. Okay, so it's the next day, and it's day for the rose ceremony. Okay, something shocking happened, though, that night. Once, like, you know how they have, like, some time before the actual rose ceremony? Mercedes goes up to Will, 
she says she's always been attracted to him, but she just didn't want to insert herself in the Olivia and Kylie mess. She starts to say some very nice stuff about him, and he starts to cry, you guys. It was so cute. Like, it was tears of joy because this was just perfect for what he was looking for in the moment. He just has had a horrible time thus far. So for her to be saying this meant the world to him. And to be honest, they do make a very nice couple. He says that even his grandmother's name is Mercedes. Now, I'm hoping that this is genuine because she could have easily just been using him to secure the rose. But it doesn't seem like that, and I'm hoping it's not like that. You guys, a couple girls were um, thirsting over this peak guy because he has a rose. And the girls he was talking to were Greer, Cat with a C, Brooklyn, Olivia, and then he goes to talk to Sam. And I don't know if he was enjoying leading some of these women, but it kind of looked like he was. But Sam in particular already had a connection with Aaron S., the white Aaron. And Peter is sort of being messy, asking her if she thinks Aaron is mature, which he's like, you know, trying to stir something up right there. So then after that, Peter goes around and tells some of the other guys, you know, I was talking to Sam and I was asking her what she thinks about Aaron, if, if maybe he's immature. So, Sean, who's another drama queen, goes and tells this information right to Aaron, which I guess in this case it was, you know, it, it was a good reason he did that. So, Sean says to Aaron, um, P is going around telling Sam you're immature, maybe she should not be into you. So, Aaron is pissed, rightfully so. So, he goes up and gets Peter and says, I don't care if you're talking, we're going to talk now. Why are you going and meddling in my relationship? And why did you even mention maturity or anything like that? Like, you're clearly trying to divide us. They go back and forth, and Aaron says, I have no respect for you. You are a piece of ass. Very tense moment. Okay, so then it is time for the first rose ceremony. Eight roses to hand out, 11 ladies, so three will be leaving. Okay, so Brayden goes first to Cap, as expected. Blake, Rose goes to Jess. Aaron B, Eliza, Will, Mercedes, Sean, Rachel, Avon, Kylie, Aaron S, Sam, and finally Peter. After some suspenseful minutes, he ends up giving his rose to Olivia, which didn't surprise me because they definitely needed her for some drama, so I'm wondering if that was well, really the producers telling him to choose her, but unfortunately, Kat, Greer, and Brooklyn have to leave. And they say their goodbyes and that's that. These three girls in particular have been so unsuccessful in their journeys in Bachelor Nation. I kind of felt bad. But the next week, ooh, things are going to get heated. Tyler is coming down and so is Tanner. So Rachel and Kat's relationships are going to be tested to the max. I can't wait for that. Okay, guys. So as far as this episode, did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it. We're, you know, finally, I feel like this is... It's kind of amazing how quickly so many relationships have solidified in the in a matter of like very few days, you know. So my question to you guys is, what do you, will you make out of the Will, Kylie, and Avon situation? Are you looking forward to seeing Kylie and Avon end up together? Maybe have Olivia go and stir up some mess? Do you think Mercedes is being genuine with Will? And do you think Kat and Brayden's relationship will survive what's going to come next week? So, you guys, let me know. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time. Have a great one. Bye.